Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John Seiler, the proud principal of Memorial Middle School. Welcome to the class of 2016 commencement. First things first, please take a moment and turn off your cell phones or turn them to silent. And please note that the fire exits are through the doors that you came in, as well as a door down in that corner and a door on either side of the platform behind me. I'd like to welcome our special presenters and guests that are behind me at the moment. I'll ask them to stand or wave. Superintendent Regina Botsford, Assistant Superintendent Rich Gussenberg, Region 15 Board of Education member John Cookson, and Brenda Carter. And now, please face the flag as the eighth grade chorus from Memorial Middle School sings our national anthem. Thank you, eighth grade chorus. You may all be seated. In your program, you'll notice we have two student speakers this year. 
This has never happened before, but we had two eighth grade students who, whose fine thoughts and words deserved to be heard by all of you. I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Vlora Hoxha, speaking for the class of 2016. Welcome teachers, parents, and the 2016 graduating class of Memorial Middle School. I am more than honored to stand before you this evening. Tonight, I would like to offer you some last advice before most of us go our separate ways. The famous Dr. Seuss once said, you have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know. You are the guy who'll decide where to go. This quote has great significance for all of us graduates. It is telling us that we have the power to be successful. We have the power to choose our own path, and that we have the power to push on. Middle school is the time in our lives where we really want to start to find ourselves. It is where we want to start blossoming into strong, independent humans that every parent knows we are capable of becoming. You have the power to choose your own path. Eighth grade is the most intimidating year because we all have our own cliques. We all want to fit in with our friends and sometimes end up following another's path, not our own. It's important to be ourselves. I know, I know. We've heard that so many times. But the reason we are told this so often is because so many people care about us. So, my first piece of advice for all graduates is to follow your own path. And if someone tries to stop you from doing so, that's okay. Show them that you're not afraid to be your own person. Because as Dr. Seuss said, you are the guy who will decide where to go. There is so much pressure on all of us to make the right choice. We start competing against each other, like to see who has their better grade in history or the most expensive sneakers. But in reality, that's not what's important. I promise you, what really matters to our teachers and parents is the way we overcome our hardest obstacles. For some, it's the pressure of exams and SATs you will have to take for colleges. But how we choose to deal with the pressure shows what kind of a person we really are. Seventh grade was definitely the year where we had the most pressure on ourselves. Dr. Seiler even told us in an assembly on the first, first day of school, seventh grade was the worst year of middle school. And he was right. We were the middle class. We weren't the prey, nor the predators. We didn't have field trips, yet had so many projects in every class. We were all so nervous. So, my advice to you is to trust yourself when it comes to dealing with pressure. If you trust yourself enough to cope with all the pressure that's put on your shoulders, you will be successful. Everything important in your life will cause you to have some pressure. If not, then it's probably not as important as you think. Pushing yourself. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose, just like Dr. Seuss said. I remember Mrs. Waterbury telling us during the first week of sixth grade that middle school was going to be the point in your life where you really have to push yourselves. Because in elementary school, you had help. In middle school, you are independent. It was a huge transition into sixth grade. We had to push ourselves to keep up with our teachers, schoolwork, and making new friends. And then, there was nature's classroom. Everything changed. Remember all the new friends we made that we probably never noticed in the sixth grade wing. But that was the whole point of nature's classroom, to push yourselves to make new friends and to push yourselves to work together to solve problems like getting lost in the woods or hiking up the highest mountain. That doesn't mean you are going to forget about your old ones, no. It just means that you are expanding your comfort zone to others. Things might get tough in high school, 
but we must keep going. We made it this far, so why give up now? If we decide where we want to go and what we want to do, we need to push ourselves to do so. So, take my advice and push on. You'll thank me later. The journey is not over yet. The next stop isn't the final destination, but it's one step closer. Freshmen. There will be many times where we will miss MMS and our very special teachers. When Senora K is your homeroom teacher, you know you're going to have an amazing year. With her incredible personality, she has put a smile on my face every day. Thanks for putting up with me for so long, Senora. There's nothing like Senora Relinsky telling us funny stories about her kids and Mrs. Sedella helping us to become kinder to each other with our new positive messages system. Days where we will long to hear Mrs. D.B. Science puns and seeing her expression when she tells them to us. These moments are priceless and they're not something that you can just forget. Yes, we must move on. But we must remember to forever hold these precious memories of middle school in our hearts. And now, here's to making new ones. Tonight, we will be celebrating our last few days as eighth graders. We made it. Tomorrow, who knows what will be in store for us? It's our turn to leave a trail in an empty path. Parents, thank you for everything you have done to help us be where we are today. Teachers, thank you for helping us get through these past few years. Without you, we would not be here today. So once again, take my advice on choosing your own path, trusting yourself to cope with pressure and pushing yourselves. And congratulations to the Memorial Middle School graduating class of 2016. Thank you, Vlora. And now, our second speaker, please welcome MMS eighth grader Christopher Pellegrini. Thank you, Dr. Seiler. I hope everyone's doing great tonight. So I'm just going to get right into it. This is not going to be your typical eighth grade graduation speech. This is not going to be one big metaphor for your time here at eighth grade. I think last year's speech was about school being symbolic of a game of football. I'm not a sports person. I didn't get a lot of it. I'm not going to compare our threes in this building to a sport, an activity, or even an object. We aren't birds learning to fly. We aren't caterpillars turning to butterflies, and we're not even a bumpy river. We are human. I'm going to give it to you straight up. No attachments. You'll be getting it raw in the flesh. There will be no funny anecdotes. Well, maybe a few to keep it exciting. But the thing is, speakers have come and gone. There's been a speech every year since the inception of the glorious Memorial Middle School. I bet some of you have tuned out to my voice already, just like you do every year. I bet you think, oh, it's another speech. Well, it is. But you should come close and listen, because we are going back to the wonderful sixth grade. A lot of people may think sixth grade was the year where everyone tries to fit in, and everyone tries to make a name for themselves, and everyone is trying new things. And we can't forget about nature's classroom, spending our time in the great outdoors with one shower per dorm. And the toilets were only to be flushed every once in a while, to conserve water, of course. Other than this, we spent our time playing gaga ball, going on yeti hunts, and cutting open pigs and frogs. All the norm for a sixth grader. And I have to admit, it was quite fun, but that was only an itty bitty piece of sixth grade. Let me zoom out and tell you the big picture. We had cookies, chips, and juice at the snack stands. It was as easy as punching in a four digit number to satisfy our stomachs. Sixth graders really like food. Now as we gorged ourselves on overpriced cookies and carbonated drinks that claim to be healthy, Time goes by. Time has progressed enough to bring our sixth grade selves right into seventh grade. In seventh grade, it's a scam. It's a nasty trick. They literally shove you in the basement with no windows. It's the, it's the darkest hallway in the building, in the lockers, one on top of the other. If we were able to float or fly, that would be okay. But as I expressed in the introduction, we are only human. We can't fly. The thing is, they give you the biggest, nicest lockers in sixth grade, and you start to think, oh, Memorial's not that bad. All that changes when you get your locker assignment in seventh. 
you're in no man's land this year. This year, the incoming sixth graders get all the attention, and the eighth graders are king. Here you are, stuck in the middle, waiting for your trout to grow up. Ah, yes, trout. The highlight of the seventh grade year. I remember each of us had a scientist job on the release day. I was a botanist. I found a few wild chives that day. And as we put the trout in a small body of water across the street from the school, I thought, where will the trout go? I wish I could follow their journey, almost swim at them to their final destination. But after all, we are only human. But soon enough, the trout went to the back of our minds, and summer was approaching. And summer passed just like that. Sometime in September, we walked in as eighth graders, rulers of the school, or so we thought. Most didn't realize the sixth graders didn't fear us that much, and no one cared that we were taller. It was all stuck up in our eighth grade heads. And I have to say, eighth grade went by fast. I'll never forget some of the things that me and many other people accomplished this year. And the classes were great as well. From Mr. Buckley's tests and quizzes that had the whole green team going insane, and SBAs that we can never stop making dumb mistakes on, there was nothing as stressful as eighth grade. But there was nothing as fun. From the late compounds trips, in DC of course, the end of the year was smooth sailing. I would like to say a thank you to all the teachers that taught me and everyone else graduating today. And we cannot forget about the amazing faculty as well. This is not a hollow thank you too. Everything that we have learned, whether we use it or not, has made us a better person by forming a work ethic, a drive to do better, or a greater understanding of the world around us. Some of us will remember what we learned, some will not. As we all depart to high school next year, remember that we are only human, but armed with knowledge, we can push the boundaries of what it means to be human. Every single person in this room can go beyond the set limits, only if they choose to. Every person in this class of 2016 can make a mark on this world, only if they choose to. Class of 2016, don't go through the motions of life. Your time is limited. Do something amazing, but at the same time remember that we are only human and no one escapes this thing called life alive. Good luck and congratulations to the Memorial Middle School class of 2016. Thank you, Chris. I'd like to welcome eighth grade language arts teacher, Ms. Sadala, to the podium. Good evening. On behalf of Mrs. Santa Maria and I, we would like to recognize those students whose speeches were also considered to be presented tonight. Bailey Quinn. You can stand up. Christiana Zeppos. Kira McNerney. Madison Kakaro, And Michael DiArenzo. And now it's my turn to share a few comments with the Memorial Middle School class of 2016. This is my 15th commencement, and being oh so proud of all of my speeches, I still have copies of the first 14. Each year, I review them to see if any sections fit the commencing class. However, this year, one of our more emboldened eighth grade speech writers, who has had five brothers and sisters precede her at Memorial Middle School, suggested in her speech that all of my speeches were the same. <laughs> well, Miss Chrissy Zeppos, I'm here to let you know your claim is less than a half truth since each of my speeches were custom written for that specific group of graduates. However, I have been known to recycle entire paragraphs from previous years. So I suppose to the ears of a half listening, not so very engaged child, all the speeches may sound the same. And I suppose if I had the duty to sit through five commencement speeches before tonight, I'd also describe, like Chrissy, this as the same tired old speech from years ago. As my parting gift to you and 
in light of having two student speakers before me and an audience sitting on hard bleacher seats with never-ending air conditioning, I'm going, not going to repeat a sentence from any of my previous 14 speeches. Usually get some applause here. In a conversation recently, I described the class of this class of 154 students as cooperative and compliant. Now that I see these words in writing, I noticed it sounds like a backhanded compliment. And this was not my intention at all. Class of 2016, when we started this year together, I was pleasantly surprised to be stopped in the hallway by more than one eighth grade teacher who wanted to tell me what a pleasure it was to have the year with such a great group of eighth graders. This rare, if ever, uttered compliment in the eighth grade hallway continued throughout the fall and winter and persisted right through the rather stressful trips to Broadway and Washington, D.C. And so to the class of 2016, I can only thank you for becoming the young adults you are, individually and collectively. I'm so proud to be able to tell the Pomperog High School staff and administration with confidence and sincerity that Memorial Middle School is sending a great group of students to their shores starting on August 30th. One special mention for five students not able to be here this evening, and I think it typifies the talents of this class. The five students are still at the University of Maryland at the History Day National Championships, performing their amazing History Day skit, having been chosen as one of the top 10 projects in the country for their age group. Let's hope they are able to view this on our live video feed right now. And bravo and congratulations to Max Bueno, Samantha Gilbert, Juliana Rodrique, Emily Strickland, and Joseph Zarif. In closing, thank you, Memorial Class of 2016. We at Memorial look forward to hearing about your many accomplishments in future years. And now, I'd like to introduce, announce the graduation awards for the class of 2016. We will be abbreviating the descriptions of each award, but you can find the full description in your program. Graduates, that's you guys, when your name is called, please stand and remain standing. Members of the audience, please hold your applause until all of the recipients for each award are standing. And for the first set of awards, I would like to welcome Mrs. Deby and Mrs. Sachs to the microphone. Good evening. The Memorial Middle School Parent Teacher Organization awards certificates and pins to five students who have distinguished themselves as outstanding students in the following areas. Science, math, algebra, French, Spanish, US history, and English. Students who are chosen, sorry, chosen for these awards based upon their interest in the subject and their contribution to the class discussions as well as their overall effort and achievement in the subject. The subject area teachers will present the awards for their discipline. As your name is called, please stand and remain standing until all five names are called. For science, I'm happy to announce uh, top students, uh, Patrick Wedekamp, Madison Kerkero, Megan Kennedy, Jermina Donny, and Max Belanchi, Blasky. Thank, 
For math, Nermina Danny, Jordan LeBron, Madison Kokaro, Kari Richardson, and Nicholas D'Amato. In algebra, Alexander Yu, Anna Koziel, Clementine Grousseau, Trevor Galliette, and Patrick Weidekamp. Nice job. For French, Nagina Tint, Megan Kennedy, Catherine Johnson, Christopher Pellegrini, and Nadia Stronkowski. For Spanish, Haley Craglior, Max Bueno, Megan Ward, Clara Haxey, and Sydney Barron. For history, Christopher Pellegrini, Nathaniel Crane, Tessa Flynn, Nicholas D'Amato, and Bailey Quinn. Congratulations. For English, Vlora Hoxha and Bailey Quinn. Kara McNearney, Clementine Brousseau. Clara McNearney, Kara McNearney, excuse me, Clementine Grousseau and Mara Fellin. Congratulations. Please welcome back to the podium, Dr. Seiler. The Middlebury Board of Selectmen Award presents a $50 cash award to, to the student who attains the highest scholastic average. Congratulations, Clementine Grousseau. And the Connecticut Association of Middle School Scholar Leader Awards was presented earlier, but we'd like to recognize them now. Eighth grade boy and girl who have demonstrated consistent scholastic achievement and who have contributed leadership and service to their school, Patrick Weidekamp and Emily Strickland. And Mrs. Botsford will announce the next two awards. Good evening. On behalf of the Connecticut Association of Public School Superintendents and the Litchfield County Superintendents Association, I am most pleased to present the Superintendents Award to two students who are active in community service and service to others and who have demonstrated academic achievement, leadership, and service to the school community. The awards are presented to Max Bueno, and Kira McNerney. Also on behalf of the Connecticut Association of Public School Superintendents and the Western Connecticut Superintendents Association, I am most pleased to present the Superintendents Award to two additional students who are active in community service and service to others and who have demonstrated academic achievement, leadership, and service to the school community. The awards are received by Nathaniel Crane and Kelly Melanson. And it is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Buckley who will present the next award. It's my pleasure to announce the Secretary of State's Excellence in Citizenship Award. This award recognizes one eighth grade student from each school in Connecticut 
who demonstrates the qualities of active participation in civic and community activities, outstanding scholarship, and dedicated school involvement. The Secretary of State's Excellence in Citizens Award is presented to Samantha Gilbert. <laughs> Sam is not here tonight, but that's a good thing. She's part of nine Memorial students who won first place in the regionals and then state competitions for National History Day. As a result, they had advanced to the national competition at the University of Maryland, representing Connecticut. Unfortunately, as you have heard, the national competitions conflict with our commencement activities. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge the following students for their dedication to academics throughout, part, throughout their participation in and success achieved at the various state and national competitions. I will start with my favorite, National History Day. Two students have created a website for a project entitled Margaret Mead, Cultural Anthropologist and Activist in Our Nation. They came in first place in the New Haven Regionals and third place in the State of Connecticut competition. Congratulations to Clara Haxey and Abby Pfeiffer. Also competing in the group competition, uh, group website division, three students researched the Flying Tigers. They are in first place in the Torrington Regional Competition and were awarded a special recognition at the state competition from the New England Air Museum. Congratulations to Christopher Pellegrini, Alexander Yu, and Kelvin Zhang. Our last two History Day groups are the nine students who advanced to nationals. Kate Johnson, Alyssa Milburn, Macy Marabito, and Nagita Thind. They created a documentary entitled Sally Ride and Her Exploration of Space. The girls won first place at the New Haven Regionals and first place at the state competition, which won them a trip to nationals. At the state competition, they also won two special recognitions, one from the Connecticut Coordinating Committee for the Promotion of History, and one from the New England Air Museum. Congratulations, girls, who've already sat down. <laughs> Finally, Max Bueno, Samantha Gilbert, Juliana Rodriguez, Emily Strickland, and Joe Zarif created a group performance called Alexander Hamilton Explores a Financial System for the New Nation of America. They won first place at Fairfield County Regionals and first place at the state competition. At Nationals this week, there were 117 performances representing the first and second place winners in 50 states and U.S. territories. We are proud to announce that Memorial's group was one of just 10 performances who were invited back for runoffs. Finals are this evening at 6.30. So Dr. Seiler, they're not watching the stream. <laughs> but it is my pleasure to introduce Madame Ganti, who will present the National French Awards. The following students are recognized for their honor status at the national level based on their achievement in the National French Exam. This year, the gold medal was awarded to Alexander Yu, Nagina Tint, and Megan Kennedy. The silver medal was awarded to Nadia Stronkowski, Christopher Pellegrini, Annabel Roy, and Tessa Flynn. Now it's my pleasure to invite Senora Eustace and Senora K to take the podium. The following students are recognized for their honor status at the national level based on their achievement in the National Spanish exam. For gold, we had two winners, Megan Ward and Hustin Gondal.
For silver, Sydney Barron, Max Bueno, Haley Craglior, Madison Kakaro, Nathaniel Crane, Sean Dumphy, Mara Fellon, Trevor Galliette, Clementine Caruso, Clara Haxey, Sam Mathena, Kira McNerney, Kelly Melson, Carrie Richardson, Nicole Natardi, Tomas Reyes, Emily Strickland, Pat Patrick Wittekamp, and Taylor Yeager. Please welcome Mrs. Diaz for the next presentation. As the Math Counts coach, I would like to recognize the following students for their participation in the Math Counts competition series. For participation at the chapter competition, Nagina Thind, Alexander Yu, Kelvin Zhang, and Husnan Gondel. This year we had one eighth grade student advance to the state competition, which was Alexander Yu. Please welcome Mrs. Albin to the podium. The Commendable Achievement Award. Memorial Middle School presents a $50 award to an individual who has maximized his or her academic potential. This individual has achieved academic success through his or her, her own efforts while developing positive relationships with both teachers and peers. Please congratulate Aya Ahabala. Please welcome Mrs. Deby to the podium. The Middlebury Police Social Club Award. The Middlebury Police Social Club presents a $50 award to four individuals who have contributed to the most to their school, church, and community. Christiana Zapos, Thomas Holmes, Victoria Gagas, and Megan Ward. The Middlebury Lions Club Award. The Middlebury Lions Club presents two checks in the amount of $50 to two students who have given outstanding service to their class, Bailey Quinn and Ryan Furr. Please welcome Mrs. Cassidy to present the next awards. The Middlebury Junior Women's Club Award awards a check in the amount of $50 to two Middlebury students of the graduating class who have demonstrated service to their community. This year's awards go to Samantha Gilbert and Clara Haxey. The Sullivan's Jewelers Award, in loving memory of Kathy DeAndrea, Sullivan's Jewelers presents a $50 award to both a girl and a boy who have worked very hard all three years at Memorial Middle School. These students have displayed tremendous effort and a willingness to help others. This year, Madison Kakaro and Michael Yaman are our awardees. Congratulations, and Mrs. Santa Maria will continue the presentations. The Amar Viswanath Memorial Award. Amar Viswanath was a beloved student at Memorial. He was positive, generous, kind, fun to be around, and would light up a room with his very presence. He showed sincere compassion and encouragement for others' troubles without exception. He approached each day with optimism and grace and a happy, cheerful smile on his face. Amar consistently went out of his way to make others happy. 
this amazing young man demonstrated all these wonderful characteristics while battling cystic fibrosis. This award is presented to two students who best exemplify Amar's optimistic outlook and impact on others. Congratulations to Rachel Rushworth and Megan Ward. The Addison Bree Barrett Award. This award is given in memory of Addison Bree Barrett, 19 month old granddaughter of former sixth grade teacher Laureen Rado. Addison Bree loved reading books because she was always curious to learn about the new things around her. Reading opened up the world to her and took her places she could not go on her own. A $50 award is given to one student who is motivated not only to read, but also enjoys reading for the simple joy of learning about the world around them. Congratulations to Sebastian Russ. Please welcome the world language teachers to present the next award. The World Language Service Award. The World Language Department at Memorial Middle School presents its service award to students who have consistently and enthusiastically dedicated their time to support Spanish and French cultural activities throughout the year. They are... For Spanish, Kira McNerney. The French Service Award goes to Juliana Manson. Now I would like to invite Mrs. Greeder and Mr. Morris to take the podium. The MMS Student Government presents an award in the amount of $100 to two students who have served in the role of classroom representative and exemplify the indispensable characteristics of student leaders. These individuals have demonstrated qualities of leadership, school spirit, and community service throughout their three years at Memorial Middle School. This year, the Student Government Awards go to Kira McNearney and Lindsay Olette. Congratulations, girl. And now to present the Drama Award, we welcome Mrs. Leanne Cassidy. A $50 award is given to each drama student who has shown great effort and improvement throughout the class. These individuals stood out, they took chances, they lightened the room and defied the fear of performing in front of their peers. They did more than just perform. They wrote and spoke about something that mattered to them and motivated people to be larger than they are. There are two students this year who have achieved this. They are Clark Atkinson and Max Boyno. Congratulations. Please welcome Ms. Pinto to the podium. Good evening. The Art Excellence Award. This special award is given to students who have displayed an extraordinary interest and ability to create. These students have been gone beyond to develop their creative talent by working independently when time would allow. They have exhibited exceptional talent and achievement in all areas of art. The following students will receive a $25 gift card to Michael's Arts and Crafts. Haley Carigliar, Carrie Richardson, Emily Strickland, Megan Ward, Tomas Reyes, Nathan Hahn, 
and Jackson Massey. The Art Service Award. The purpose of this award is to recognize a student or students who, over the past years, have demonstrated a consistent willingness to help in many ways that would ordinarily go unnoticed. In addition to being dedicated to improving art skills, these students have donated many hours to the organization, cleanup, and clerical needs of the art department. The following students will receive a $25 gift card to Michael's Arts and Crafts. Abigail Pfeiffer, Clementine Grousseau. At this time, I'd like to welcome our illustrious music department. The Choral, Band, and Orchestra Music Awards are given in recognition of a student's musicianship, enthusiasm, leadership, and service to a performing group. The Director's Award is given to a student who exemplifies these traits in multiple ensembles, organizations, and events. For choir, Tessa Flynn and Clementine Grousseau. For orchestra, Hannah Gregory, Jordan LeBron, Kelly Melanson, and Macy Morbido. The band award is given to Kate Johnson, Nadia Strankowski, and Lucien Soto. Our director's award this year goes to Rachel Rushworth. The final music award tonight is the Randy Rhodes Memorial Music Award. This award is given in memory of Randy Rhodes by the Memorial Middle School Music Department. A $100 award and gift is given to a superior musician who has demonstrated talent, devotion to music, dedication to the music program, and to his or her personal musical accomplishment. I'm very excited and proud to give this award this year to Christopher Pellegrini. Coaches awards are selected by the Memorial Middle School coach of each sport. For softball, Christiana Stiber. For baseball, Jack Shea. For field hockey, Nagina Thind. For boys soccer, Max Blaschke. For girls soccer, Holly McFarland. For boys basketball, Camden Collette. For girls basketball, Lindsay Olet. And for cross country, Camden Collette, Patrick Weidekamp, and Lindsay Olette. And now I'd like to welcome back Mr. Podium, uh, Mr. Buckley to the podium. <laughs> Middlebury Soccer Association prevents awards in the amount of $50 and a plaque to two students who have consistently participated in soccer. This recognition is based on good sportsmanship, good citizenship, compliance with school policies, and academic good standing. Please congratulate Christian Musi and Kate Johnson. The Tina M. Kolakoskis Award is given to a Memorial Girls soccer player in memory of Tina Kolakoskis. Realizing the extreme need for a middle school girls soccer team, Tina spirited the idea and established Memorial's first all girls soccer team in 1999, which she went on to coach for three years. A $100 award is given to a member of the girls soccer team who has exhibited the highest qualities of team leadership, integrity, school spirit, 
community awareness, and has maintained academic high grades. Congratulations to Mara Fallon. And for the final awards tonight, I'd like to welcome back Mrs. Sachs. Um. Well, I'm happy to announce the last two awards. Uh, the Robert Bona a Memorial Award uh, it's for Middlebury Baseball Inc. Wait, Middlebury Baseball Inc. in memory of the late Robert Bona presents a $100 award and a plaque to an individual who participates in sports, demonstrates scholastic uh, achievement, and whose attitude and personality are consistent with the high goals and ideals of a scholar-athlete. And I'm happy to award this to Tomas Reyes. The Pete Bernier uh, Memorial Award, uh, Middlebury Baseball, Inc., in memory of the late Pete Bernier, presents a $100 award and plaque to an individual who has and continues to participate in Middlebury Baseball. This player's dedication and hard work on the field and positive attitude has made him a model player and a valuable asset to his team. And I'm happy to present this to Joshua Joseph. And I'm now gonna turn the podium over to uh, Dr. Seiler. Thank you, that ends the awards presentation portion of this evening. I'd now like to invite Mrs. Bork to the podium to describe the process for awarding the commencement certificates. Thank you. Good evening. It has been my pleasure to work with this eighth grade class for the past three years. You are an amazing group of young adults, and I am proud to have been a part of your journey. As you embark on the next phase of your journey, I wish you the best. In a moment, I will begin reading student names. This is a very special night for everyone, and we want to make sure that all names are heard and all graduates feel respected. Therefore, please hold all cheering and applause until after all the names have been read. I thank you in advance for your cooperation. At this time, we will begin the presentation of certificates. Aya Al Habal Joseph Andruck Michael Andruck Julia Rose Anelli Sophia Grace Angera Clark Eileen Atkinson Sydney Barron Sasha Powers Bernier Max Blatchkey Cole Breyer Celia Joan Brown Jonathan Michael Calabrese Jacqueline Capalbo Michael James Capadano Haley Elizabeth Caraglier Christian D. Caruso Chase Allen Chabot Madison Kakaro Camden Richard Collette 
Jordan Collimore. Chelsea Rose Crane. Nathaniel Gerard Crane. Nicholas D'Amato. Nermina Donnie. Carolina Denite. Charles Dylan DePino. Michael DiRienzo. Phoebe Dariu Crowley. Nancy DeLeo. Haley Nicole DeMeglio. Andrew Patrick Doan. Sean James Dunphy. Mara Fellin. Max Fitch. Levi Paul Fitzpatrick. Hugh T. Flanagan. Tessa Marie Flynn. Luke Joseph Foley. Ryan Marshall Fur. Victoria Bell Gagas. Trevor Galliet. Trey Whiting Generali. Christopher Anthony Gilberti. Juliet Elizabeth Golden. Ethan Gomulinski. Husnan Ahmad Gandal. Taylor Gravel. Henna Gregory. Clementine Francoise Grousseau. Dominic David Gooley. Clara Lee Haxey. Kyle R.J. Hill. Thomas John Holmes. Nathan T. Hahn. Jonathan Ryan Horn. Laura Hoxa. Arena Ismali. Alexandra Grace Jablon. William Thaddeus Johnson. Joshua T. Joseph. Morgan Ray Kales. Connor Christopher Keen. Megan Kennedy. Katharina Kimmer. Rachel Sarah Corain. George Constantine Kostafis. Dean J. Kaloris. Leah Gabrielle Kowalaski. Anna Christine Koziel. Isabella M. Kozlowski. Justin Quapong. Thomas Alexander Kwashnak. Jordan E. LeBron. 
Michael Ryan Lewis. James Bartholomew LaRusso. John Vincent LaRusso. Nicole Leah LaRusso. Sean Lynch. Juliana Nicole Manson. James Gunner Morano. Isabella Aria Mariani. Nicole Gloria Marino. Madison Riley Marcalon. Jackson S. Massey. Samuel J. Mathena. Holly Catherine McFarland. Megan McGrath. Katya McKiernan. Kira McNerney. Kelly Lynn Melanson. Henry Douglas Miscavige. Zachary Meyer Miller. Logan Bruce Montalto. Christopher Moreira. Christian Alberto Mucci. Matthew G. Mullen. Nicole Maya Natardi. Victoria Rose Obar. Jack Brendan O'Brien. Song Min O. Oh. Lindsay Grace Ouellette. Sophia Bell Patillo. Christopher Sean Pellegrini. Samantha Grace Perella. Abigail Lee Pfeiffer. Haley Elizabeth Pompano. J. Lee Poon. Bailey Elizabeth Quinn. Ian Philip Raystrick. Nicholas David Riley. Tomas Reyes. Kari Ray Richardson. Joshua Dominic Rio. Annabelle Roy. Sebastian Waldemar Russ. Rachel Rushworth. Andrew J. Rusamano. Benjamin J. Rusamano. Ben Schwartz. Michaela Shea Sepalak. Jack Shea. Cameron J. Silk. Jake Slavacek. 
Lauren Elizabeth Small. Lucien Raul Tomas Soto. Christiana Stiber. Nadia Stronkowski. Cassandra M. Struna. William Sumple. Eric Matthew Tolan. Connor Twombly. Christiana Sophia Zeppos. Corwin Thomas Van Dusen. Joseph Stephen Vecarelli. Megan Ward. Ethan Nolan Waskiel. Mackenzie Weiss. Patrick Weidekamp. Taylor J. Yeager. Lindsay Kathleen Yale. Michael Joseph Yaman. Alexander Yu. Kelvin B. Zhang. Dion Zuda. Brooke Alexa Zyko. Catherine Marie Johnson. Alyssa Milburn. Macy Morabito. Nagina Thind. It is my great pleasure to present Memorial Middle School's graduating class of 2016. Thank you, everyone. Before we end the evening, I'd like to recognize a number of people. First of all, way back up against the wall where there's a window going into the locker room, and now she's saying, oh, God, not me, John. But it's okay. I'd like to recognize Memorial's number one secretary, Betty Brennan, who's retiring this year after 27 years of running the commencement for Memorial Middle School like a military campaign across Europe um, without Betty. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to have commencements in the future. She has done an exemplary job year after year of putting this together and held all of us to a higher standard and we will miss her greatly. So thank you, Betty. <clears throat> Finally, over here on my left, I'd like the memorial staff to stand. They rarely do, but I ask them to stand, and sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. They're all the strange-looking people in the front row over here. <clears throat> yes, thank you. They've been, uh, they've been working a lot the last two weeks, making all of these special trips and events and awards um, and trying to close out grades at the same time and close down a building. Um, but over the last week, it's been extraordinary, starting with the trip to Broadway, Compounds, Washington, and the dance tonight. So 
Um, again, without you, none of this could happen, and I salute each and every one of you for being here tonight. Thank you very much. <clears throat> It's a wrap. Thank you very much. You've been a great audience this, af this afternoon and this evening. Thanks for turning out. Uh, we're going to do a recessional, which will be really interesting because we haven't practiced it at all. Um, so we're going to start the music and see what these guys do. Uh, hopefully, they'll go in order out the two doors to my left and to my right. But since we haven't practiced, we'll just see what happens. But they are a really good group of kids, so I think they can do this. You're welcome to follow them out once the final folks in the alphabet go out those doors into the grassed area. Thank you very much.